Hi, I'm Bill McMeegan. Welcome to Scotch Plains Stories. We're coming to you from Scotch Plains Fairmont High School, which today is playing host to the 11th Annual Garden State Fesh, a statewide dance competition sponsored by the Marine Moore School of Irish Dance, located right here in Scotch Plains. We'll take a closer look at this day of Irish dance later in the program, but now we'll head on down the road to the JCC of Central New Jersey, where recently two remarkable Scotch Plains students helped make the opportunity to save a life as simple as swabbing your cheek. Today we are um, registering people in the HLA National Bone Marrow Registry and it puts your DNA information into the registry and if someone goes to the bank that needs a bone marrow transplant, if they find a match, that person is contacted. So we are registering people for that. Um, today we're going to hope to swab between 200 and 300 people to help um, fight this horrible disease and find a match for someone who needs it one day. Margot got diagnosed in the spring, so we decided to do something for her. And my dad came to us one morning and was like, why don't you do this? So just went from there. We'd love to help especially since Margo is one of our best friends, so then we contacted the JCC and I had been friends with Mallory before this, so we knew she would be willing to help us. When they approached me about it in October, I was thrilled to help out because I have a close relationship with Margo and with both girls. We met about once a week for the past couple of months. Um, the first step was really fundraising and coming up with how we were going to make all this money because it was really important to the girls that these tests be free because we knew that that would be a huge restriction. We had a casino night for the teens, a lot of Scotch Plains Family High School kids there, which was awesome. Um, that event raised $1,500 and Danny and Lauren with their friends did tons of canister drives. They wrote letters to corporations and we've raised a total of $10,000 today. So we're thrilled. Um, also, we had to get a list of volunteers together, train them for today's event, get food donations, um, decorations, tablecloths, all the little things you don't think about, but it's really a lot of work. So we're really happy with how it's turned out. So far, it's still early, but there's a lot of people here getting tested, so it's been great. Um, when you first walk in, the first table, they have a stop sign that says, stop, are you any of these things? There's a list of diseases, age limit, weight limit, things like that. and you fill out forms, make sure that you're clear medically to do this, and then you go and um, write down all your information, your address, you know, that kind of thing, and then you go and get tested. You put stickers on your swab, swab four corners of your mouth, one, two, three, four, put stickers on them again, put them in the packet, and you're done. It's a quick and easy, painless process. just take these uh, Q-tip like swabs and like you're brushing your teeth almost. It's very easy, very simple, takes about 10 minutes and you're done. You get put on a list and when someone does need a match for bone and bone marrow they'll contact you but matches are very rare and you can refuse if you don't want to give your bone marrow. Being a marrow donor is something I've thought about for a long time but I really didn't know how to do it, and so having an event so close, so easy, uh, organized by people that I knew, made it an ideal opportunity to come down and, and just uh, get on the register. It seems like it's moving pretty well. Every table is full right now, so I'm happy with that. It's important to me for many reasons, but today especially because of my close relationship with the Street family. Marvel's older sister Gabrielle is one of my closest friends, and anything I can do to help this family, I would always do. We need to find a cure, and bone marrow is a great cure for leukemia. It's one of it's the key match in um, curing someone. Uh, 
if I could help someone, you know, you feel so helpless when someone you know has cancer, there's nothing you can do, but this is something that maybe you can do to help somebody who finds themselves in that situation. I think it's important because even if you don't know anyone that has cancer, you've still heard about it. Everyone's heard about cancer and it's really important to help find any cure possible and for leukemia, bone marrow transplants are very important so it's just a community coming together to make a difference. To learn more about the National Marrow Donor Program or to become a donor yourself, please go to www.marrow.org. The dancers competing here today are among the best in New Jersey. They have dedicated countless hours to both hard shoe and soft shoe until their routines are truly outstanding. Of course, not all dancers in our community are as experienced as these on display here today. In fact, each spring in preparation for the Scotch Plains Fairmont High School Musical, a whole new crop of actors and singers hit the dance floor for the first time. Our cameras were there as they began to prepare for this year's spring production of Guys and Dolls. You're doing the bouncing floor, they're doing the roll to the head, you're doing the slide through. And freeze. So I want to see this picture. Ha! And ha! This is our first dance rehearsal, and I'm uh, incredibly thrilled to be working with Jisa again because uh, Jisa is really great at, you know, if I ask her, you know, what do you think the mood should be, and we figure out the mood and we figure out the dance moves, and I can explain to her in layman terms what I want, and then she can turn this into an incredible dance, which is absolutely mind boggling. And uh, this is getting the boys up and, and moving, and, and Jisa has the capability of turning a rock into a rocket. And go one, two, three, four, and. I have to say, I did West Side Story a few years back. These guys are very coordinated very coordinated. I thought it would be a lot tougher, but they're here to work and they're doing a great job. I've never really danced with guys before, but like I'm so shocked at how coordinated they are, and I can really get a lot out of them. I've never done any dancing before at all, except for failing at rehearsals, I mean at uh, auditions for show choir and last year's musical. They're doing really great. Um, it could have gone horribly wrong, and it was going very well. And so I'm really happy for them because they were nervous when they came in, but they're pulling it off. So once they get the hang of it, once they start, you know, getting the general idea, then then all of a sudden it's, it's like one spark leads to another, to another, to another, and then you know all of a sudden you have some guys looking kind of scared going into becoming dancers, and and it's you know when when the mo moment happens where everything goes right, it's it, nothing's better than that. So just tell me that step, ready and step. It's real subtle, right? And that's when the four counts arm comes to the hat. Ready, feet apart. Ready, go one. I'm having the best time with these kids and they work really hard. That's what I see. The, one of the main things I see with these kids is that they're here and they give 100%. They're not here just uh, to be lazy or get out of here as soon as we can. They're here to work. And that's what's a nice experience with these kids. Our practices have been going great, all the rehearsals, our dance, our singing, everything's going so smoothly and I can only imagine it going amazingly. I've been thinking about this show now for, oh God, uh, at least you know four or five months. So to see my ideas all of a sudden start to manifest itself and to actually come to life, it's, it's very sur surrealistic because it's only been pictured in my head until up to this. We've been practicing um, the dance moves for um, the song Luck Be A Lady. 
It's almost, it's kind of like the big climax of the show, and the main character, Sky Masterson, makes a bet um, with some of the other gangs, the, uh, some of the other gangsters, and he is um, betting that they can't um, I think they roll a thousand dollars against their souls. So if they lose this this crap game, then they all have to go to a mission uh, missionary meeting to confess their sins, and then that leads into another big number. So it's really the guy's chance to show off that they can dance and that they know what they're doing. <laughs> It's been a, a new experience for me, really, and it's I, I'm amazed at how easy it is with, with like everyone else around me to help and Jisa teaching me real well. There is a ton of dancing in this show, and it's gonna be really fun. It's not just like we're actually doing real dancing, and for, coming from someone who's danced for her entire life, I know this isn't easy, but I think we're gonna get it, and it's gonna be really amazing. It's really cool being here with all these guys. Like, it, you feel like you're really part of a family, kind of. And like, ev everyone's like, going through the same stuff that you that you do. Maybe they have more experience with dancing, but they haven't done this dance at all. So you're all learning together. I think it's going to be amazing. The dancing is going to be amazing. The singing, the acting, it's going to be funny. And I think everyone should come see it. They're, they're really great kids. I love working with them. They're very easy to direct. And I think the show is going to be absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> I'm just really, I want to encourage everyone to really come out and support Rep Theater because this year we have a dream team. Coming out, coming out, coming out, coming out, right. Ha! <laughs> Scott's Plains Spanwood High School Repertory Theater production of Guys and Dolls is scheduled to run Friday, March 13th through Sunday, March 15th, and then again Friday, March 19th through Sunday, March 21st. For more information or to purchase tickets, please go to www.spfk12.org. Coming up next, we'll see how two schools who are rivals on the field came together in the TV studio recently to produce the ultimate look at local sports. And later, we'll drop by a senior prom here in Scotch Plains that has nothing to do with fourth-year students here at Scotch Plains Fairmont High School. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm Ashley Fairfield, your reigning Miss New Jersey for 2008-2009, and you are watching Scotch Plains Television. Welcome back. For more than half a decade, our Scotch Plains Fairmont High School television production students have worked with Westfield High School TV students to bring both our local communities the best coverage of local sporting events in numerous joint productions. But recently, these two TV production forces got together for their very first studio shoot, a show called Team of Rivals, about, you guessed it, local sports. We're doing some kind of sports show. Uh, I know you guys from Scotch Plains are here. Other than that, I don't really know much. Hello folks, and welcome to the first episode of Team of Rivals with Kevin and Kevin. I'm Kevin Russell. And I'm Kevin Yeager. That's right. We here at Scotch Plains TV and Westfield TV would like to welcome you to our show. Each episode will bring you updates on local high school sports and what's going down on the pro and collegiate levels. We're shooting a sports show with Kevin Yeager and Kevin Russell, one from Westfield, one from um, Scotch Plains, and we are mixing the crews today in Westfield Studio. Really, you can just do the 
After we do, I'm gonna do my highlights for our basketball. That'll come up, and it'll post the Western basketball schedule, which is why I gotta make Scotch Plains basketball schedule. Then we did hockey too, so we're gonna have another hockey one. A couple of kids told me they wanted to see like more sports on TV, so I figured, why can't we incorporate high school sports and pro sports and do a little bit of NFL playoffs? Because it's obviously a big time of year in sports. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check. So, uh, I got the graphic. Let's go back to two. We brought in lockers and stuff, um, you know, to make the set, you know, look really cool, like the locker room. Uh, Kevin Russell brought in some sports jerseys, so um, should be pretty cool. Um, I think it's a great idea because Westfield has a very nice set, and we have like good people at Scotch Plains, and there are, I'm sure there's talented people at Westfield too, and I'm sure it's going to be a great shoot. Um, oh no, Carnegie Christian was Owen six Upcoming game on Saturday against Westfield. It's a cool experience, you know. Give uh, one show once a month, you know. Come at a new environment, learn about other people's environment. It'd be cool. Scott's plans, uh, 62, uh, Honey Catholic only 14. Um, it's really cool. Uh, we get stuff from both schools, so it adds a little bit to it, and uh, it should be interesting to see how the other uh, rival school is doing in their sports. It's pretty cool so far. I the studio is really nice here, so. Hopefully everyone will be able to get out and support both teams Saturday at FBF High School. And then he's going to say, I talked to the captain, Sasha, he knows me. You can type in there and it'll expand it. You're not going to be able to expand it. We're getting ready to go through a live, well, a live to tape production and uh, we're just finishing up getting everything ready for everyone to uh, have their jobs and know what they're doing and hopefully we can produce a really nice show. I mean, it's really cool, especially like when you got to work with him, you know, in the past, and then you get to work with him, you know, again, so you kind of get to know him a bit. Um, so it's just like, cool, you know, pleasant surprise just to, you know, get to reunite with them. I know I worked with them before, and they're all very passionate about what they do. Their equipment's fantastic, and their studio is the most amazing studio I've ever seen. We have nothing compared to them, and I can only wish that one day we'd have half as much equipment. A lot of great catches to the game. That was probably one of the big factors of how they won that game. They also played that game without their other star wideout, Anquan Bolden, who was a top NFL wideout this season, probably top 10 in the league. Number 11, Melvin Hansels, comes up with a great steal, and as you think he goes to lay it up, he throws a one-handed dunk. I think it's a cool idea to meet and the rivals clash at once, talk about each other and stuff like that, talk about other topics, and um, have fun. Our schools are very competitive, but there's no reason why we can't come together and do something cool together and create something nice. Our Scotch Plains Fairmont High School television production students look forward to many more joint shoots with Westfield High School this spring and in years to come. When most high school students think about a senior prom, they envision an early June affair marking the high point of their last year of public school. But recently, the Fairmont Scotch Plains YMCA Leaders Club took the idea of a senior prom to a whole new level, providing a night of music and dance to those who can enjoy it most. Well, what we're doing is we're hosting a uh, like a prom for the seniors because they don't get to get out a lot. So we just thought it'd be nice if we got them all together in the ballroom and they got to dance with each other. The 
they made the decorations, they made centerpieces, we put together invitations, and we just decorated as the Moon Glowers come. They've been very participatory in the event, and it's amazing. Um, it was actually our group leader's idea to have this event because she, um, she thought that we should do something with the seniors this year, so she just kind of came up with the idea that we should um, have a prom for the seniors. One of the members of the team leaders called Colleen got the moon blower, she's a part of them, to play. And basically we're just trying to make a fun night for the seniors here. Well, we were trying to plan this whole night and we really weren't sure if we should get a DJ or just play an iPod with the same, like this kind of music. And I realized it would be the perfect thing to have us, the moon blowers, come in and play the songs that they already know and we thought a live band would be way more fun for all the residents here. And the youngsters who are performing are excellent. They really are pros. To me, they are. They could perform on Broadway. We have them all in their different gowns, which are all donated by um, local consignment shops and everything. I got to go pick them up. They're so cute. The back of my car was all sequins. We got all of our residents dressed up. It took all day. We have like little boutonnieres and corsages. It looks so cute. And they're having so much fun. It's a lot of residents also who are responding really well to this kind of music because it's from their era, but also just the feeling of getting dressed up. Like they haven't been dressed up and going out since one of their kids' weddings. There's food, there's dancing. It's a lot of fun. It's taking us back to many good years. <laughs> it's been a long time since we went to a prom. It's good, everyone's having fun, we're all dancing. The band is great. Oh, there's lots of those old songs that I still know the words to. And it's good to hear them playing them. Leaders is a club uh, organized to help the community, make the community stronger, uh, and we also express the four core values of the YMCA, responsibility, caring, respect, and honesty. It's a really great program. Um, I love doing it. The kids are really great, and I hope to get more people involved and just keep doing things like this. Well, I got to dance with a uh, senior too, and uh, I got to serve food and talk to them and take pictures. Uh, I really hope we're brightening their day. I get one more time. It's really great because everyone's out and dancing. There's food and order, and it's fun. Jump with the crowd, baby, we'll never let you down. You gotta jump with the crown, have a ball tonight. Cause when the song is high, little baby that jumps on the idiot spot, little baby gotta jump with the crown. And it shows also that the young people are getting involved with the older ones. I really hope that we can brighten their day and just make their lives a little better. I really like spending time with them. They've all been very nice. Like, you just give them a flower and they give you a hug and a kiss. They really appreciate what we're doing. Oh, I think it's wonderful that they would want to come here and entertain us. Because we love entertainment. Fun and I really enjoy what we're doing, and I hope they have us back again. I think the seniors are having a lot of fun, and so are we, so I consider that a success. It's going great. The kids are really excited. A couple of them come up to me and thank me. Um, the nursing home staff has as well. Everyone's very excited to be here. 
couple staff from the Y also came to see us, support us. It's been a great night. Tonight's event has been really fun. The, the residents here are so much fun. They've been a handful, they have a lot of character, and they're all having a lot of fun, which makes it even better for us. It's kind of late right now, too. It's almost 8 o'clock, and they're still going strong. So it's very exciting, and I'm very grateful to the jazz band and to um, Shalice and the kids from the Y. They're so nice. Be sure to look for profiles of future Family Scotch Plains YMCA Leader Club events on upcoming episodes of Scotch Plains Stories. Next, we'll meet a local hero who helped break the color barrier in the U.S. military. And later, we'll take a closer look at what this Garden State Fest is all about. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. It starts with a splash, a kick, a jump, a dive. That might just be the start of an incredible moment in your life. The United States looks like he's going to hold on for the goal. And he the Americans go nuts. Many of the biggest accomplishments start as a splash. So make a splash and make new friends. To find a swim club in your area, log on to usaswimming.org. You're watching Scotch Plains TV. You're watching Scotch Plains TV. Estás guardando Scotch Plains Television. Estás mirando el canal de televisión de Scotch Plains. Vous regardez la televisión Scotch Plains. Ich schaue Scotch Plains Fernsehen jeden Tag. You're watching Scotch Plains TV. Come on, come on. It's a shizzle. Welcome back. Scotch Plains citizens have participated in every armed American conflict since the Revolutionary War. Recently, Malcolm Nettingham, a 1939 graduate of Scotch Plains Fairmont High School, spoke with the Scotch Plains Fairmont High School Alumni Association about his experience as one of the original members of the 99th Fighter Squadron, the Tuskegee Airmen, the first all African American air unit in U.S. military history. There were black men and women too who were pilots before the war. But a government study had said black men were not intelligent enough to fly an airplane. But at the same time now, the government was under pressure from the NAACP, the National Association for Advancement of Colored People, other organizations, and influential people, both black and white, who were pressuring the government to allow black men to train as pilots. There was so much pressure on them that the government says, okay, let's give it a try. We know it won't work, but let's give it a shot. And that shot developed into an all-black Army Corps flying squadron that later became known as the Tuskegee Airmen. When I went to radio class, black, the black guys who were going to be radio men, they went to school as a group, as a class, 25 or 30 guys uh, at a time. But then, in 1945, orders came through for one class of black airmen to attend radio school with a class of about 2,500 white airmen. That one class was composed of five airmen. That was the class that I was in. No reasons were given why we were gonna go to class with the white airmen. They just sent orders down that says, you're going to school as an integrated group. Now, we still were housed in the same segre segregated areas as before, but we did attend class with the white airmen. We did 26 weeks of Army Air Corps flight radio school at Scott Field, Illinois, and we became the first integrated aircraft 
flight technical school class in Air, Army Air Corps history. But then we had to go to gunnery school, six weeks of gunnery school in Yuma, Arizona. And again, only the five of us. We were mixed in with a class of about 25 white guys who were uh, going to gunnery school. We knew from the beginning that this was another experiment. We knew that we were being tested, we were being watched, we were being evaluated, and that was fine with us. And that was what we wanted because we knew that we could measure up. So we welcomed the opportunity. We finished the course, graduated as aircraft radio gunners and received our wings, but again, separately from the white airmen. People often ask me about particular people, particular airmen who were Tuskegee Airmen. There were about a thousand pilots alone. Add on to that the people who were the support people, the radio men, the crew chiefs. There were a lot of Tuskegee Airmen. So that when somebody asked me if I knew such and such a thing, such and such a person, um, most times I don't know them. When they started the first class of, of, of pilots, uh, that was in 1941 in July. And by early 1943, the squadron left for combat duty, combat duty in North Africa. They, they flew support missions, um, destroying ammunition and uh, fuel depots, uh, destroying convoys of, of Italians and Germans. And at the same time, of course, uh, they were dogfighting uh, with the German airplanes. That was over North Africa and Sicily. Later in 1944, the group was transferred to Italy from North Africa for a variety, of, a variety of reasons. The 477th Bomb Group, of which I was a part, never got a chance to fly overseas. We trained and trained and we flew all around the United States, but we didn't get a chance to go overseas. And growing, growing up here in Scotch Plains was easy compared to if I lived in Mississippi or Alabama or Georgia. Well, I think I've taken up a lot of your time and I appreciate you listening to me. In 2007, Mr. Nettingham was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal for his outstanding service to America. St. Patrick's Day this month brings Irish culture to the fore and this Garden State Fest taking place right here at Scotch Plains Heron High School offers the best look at Irish dancing in all of New Jersey. Well, this is the annual Garden State Fesh. Um, it's our 11th year running uh, this Fesh. It's a big competition uh, of Irish dancing, and children come from all over the country, really, as far as Canada, Florida, Georgia, some from the West Coast. Today's actually a pretty big competition because Worlds are in about three weeks, and they're in Philly this year, so. Everyone's trying to go out big because it's in America for the first time. We have fishes all year round, but it's all, there's a lot of competitions in March, which is the month of St. Patrick's Day. Well, my 18-year-old, she started in the first grade, and from the very first time that she came to a competition, she um, she was just hooked. She thought, even though it's crazy, you know, chaotic, absolutely, absolutely loved it. It's a cultural thing, but it's also a competitive thing, and so it's a, it's a chance for the kids, boys and girls, to um, compete, showcase their talents. 
my competition, we'll be doing a hard shoe dance and a soft shoe dance. A hard shoe is kind of like a tap shoe, and a soft shoe is kind of like a jazz shoe, almost. I just did my second round, which is the soft shoe. We do it in the soft shoes as opposed to the hard shoes, and it's a lot lighter. We jump a lot higher, and it, um, one of the main things is we have to be on our toes the whole time and cross out our feet, and it's really tough afterwards. I'm out of breath, as you can see. We practice like up to four times a week at, at the studio, and then we're supposed to dance every night at home. It's a lot of work for about two minutes. My mom, her part of the family's Irish. So when I said I wanted to do dance, she told me about Irish dancing, and we found the nearest school, which was Marie Moore, and I started in two years at the age of four. I would always like come with my sister and watch her dance, and so my mom didn't think I would ever want to do Irish dance, but now I do it. When I was little, I watched the show called The Wiggles, and they had Irish dancers on their show once, so I thought it would be really fun, so I joined Irish Dance. And today, I'm in under 11 open championship competition, and I'm trying to do my best. It's very competitive, like, there's um, all different levels of dancing, and you, you make your way up and you get to the highest level, and there's competitions that you go to that are international that you have to qualify for. A lot of work, time, dedication, heart, money. It's been really fun. In the beginning, my daughter and her best friend did it together. So her mom and I, you know, we would do it. We'd go to the Feshes together. We'd go to the Oroctus together, uh, share a hotel room. You know, it was really fun. And um, we still sort of do that. And I've made a lot of friends. We have tons of children here dancing, and it's a, it's a big pastime for kids all over the country. It was always there, it's going back from hundreds of years in Ireland, and it's really taken, um, taken on greatly over here uh, in the United States. There's hundreds and hundreds of schools. Um, I think river dance was a huge impact on getting people aware of Irish dancing. It's always been there, but it was never had that great publicity. And that whole um, influx of dancers that we got back in 1997 when it first appeared uh, was, was great. But uh, it's all over the country. It's even in Europe now. Uh, South Africa they have schools in, so it's, it's worldwide. It's easy to get in touch with the culture of Ireland and um, I mean my mom's from Ireland so she got me into it and ever since then I've loved it. Um, it looks kind of crazy from the outside. The world is like psycho and everybody's just always going crazy with the dresses get more extravagant every year but um, I mean it's fun. We do a lot of custom where we consult with a client and they pick their design and their fabrics and their colors and um, really design the dress to suit their personality. It is a lot of work and anybody that does these will tell you that um, there's just, I mean, from concept to completion, uh, there's 40 to 60 hours worth of work in them. My niece was involved in Irish dancing about 12 years ago and her school needed someone to complete their school costume so I started with that and one of a kind is kind of more my thing so I did a solo dress for one person put up a website and then that was kind of the end of my life we've just been swamped ever since this is a school costume and it's also very traditional which I like I come from Dublin and my dance teacher would be very happy with this costume <laughs> Fun. Our teachers are really nice and we go and we dance our dances all the time and I just love going there. I go three days a week. Uh, Irish dancing is pretty big in Scotch Plains. My dance school is actually right in Scotch Plains by Snuffies and there's a dance school in Cranford, one in Clark and I think one in Westfield, which are all pretty big dance schools in the region. 
have a school here in Scotch Plains. Uh, we also teach in Pennington, uh, New Jersey, and we're opening a new location in Doylestown. Uh, I've been here for the last uh, 18 years here in Scotch Plains teaching. And uh, we have children from the ages of four up to 24. workout and it's really really fun. It's great. I've made the best friends. We travel together all over America and all over Ireland. It's great. It's really fun but it's a lot of hard work. It's a big time commitment. It's a, it's a lot of money unfortunately but it's also an awesome time. You meet tons of friends. These girls, some of them will probably be my wedding. It's just an awesome thing to get involved in. We hope everyone's having a good time and the kids do well and do their best and win a few medals and stuff and we'd like to thank all the parents who support the fresh here yearly and uh, without them we wouldn't be here and just hope everybody has fun. I grew up in an Irish family. I did not dance when I was younger. And um, when my friend suggested it 10 years ago, oh, the girl should do Irish dance, I thought that seemed so funny. And it's really turned out to be a just a wonderful thing for our whole family. We've been to Ireland four times, and you know we've been all over the country for the nationals. So my daughter's had a great experience uh, through the Irish dance. For more information on the Garden State Fesh or Irish dancing in Scotch Plains, please visit www.mariemoore-irishdance.com. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Scotch Plains Stories. As usual, if you have comments on this program or any episode, please feel free to contact us at www.sptv at spfk12.org. So until next time, I'm Bill McMeekin for Scotch Plains Stories, saying slime go foil, in the 2009 Garden State Fesh.